In general, operating in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous environment like the one created by COVID-19 requires business leaders to ruthlessly prioritize. They must prepare their businesses for alternate realities and find new business opportunities. Within the fashion industry, there may be no better example of this than Rent the Runway. Pre-pandemic, it was riding high on the growing fashion rental market, something we covered a few years ago in the state of fashion under the theme, the end of ownership. But then, of course, COVID-19 hit and the business, like many other fashion businesses, ground to a halt. But for rental businesses, it was even tougher. Who needs to rent clothes when people rarely leave the house and all special occasions are canceled? For entrepreneurs with a growth mindset, the past few months have also been one characterized by hope, change, reinvention, and reset. And for Jennifer Hyman, co-founder and CEO of Rent the Runway, the last 10 months have constituted what she calls the second founding moment of her company. And she's ready to take on the post-pandemic era with new fervor. To learn more, please welcome Jennifer Hyman in New York in conversation with BOF's chief correspondent, Lauren Sherman in Los Angeles. Over to you, Lauren. Thank you, Imran. And Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us. I'm so excited to chat with you. The last conversation we had, I looked on my calendar, it was on February 28th. And we were talking, I was doing a big story about the future of buying luxury goods online. And I really wanted to speak to you because business models were changing and, and Rent the Runway was at the forefront, for, forefront of, of how consumer behavior was changing. And we had a big sweeping conversation. I'm not sure if we talked about COVID-19. I think we might have for briefly, but it was definitely. We talked about the impact that it was going to have on the supply chain. We were focused mostly on the angle of what's happening out of China and are we actually gonna be able as a retailer to receive our clothing from hundreds of designers. So that was really the problem that, that we were focused on then. And that was even early days in focusing on the supply chain issues. So fast forward two weeks about, and that's when the lockdowns in the US and in Europe really started, especially in London and, and in, in the US. Can you speak to what happened to the business at that moment and, and when you realized it was going to be a seismic shift in, in what you had been doing for all these years? Yeah, so first I just wanted to thank you for that beautiful introduction. I, I think that any period of change is often a time where you have to think about reinvention. And... But when that pandemic first hit, the first thing that I focused on was getting our house in order in order to sustain us through what we were convinced was going to be a very long period of time of abnormality. And so the first thing we did was we made kind of deep capital and OPEX cuts throughout the business. We inspected basically every line item of our P&L and we were really rigorous around what are the things that we're fundamentally not going to be doing over the next year and let's just cut them out. And then we had to make very difficult decisions as it relates to our employee population. Rent the Runway was a company employing thousands of employees. We had to uh, conduct a layoff. We had to put employees on furlough. And in a series of horrible options, we chose ones that we thought were the most empathetic, the most transparent and kind of emblematic of who we are. Now, what was really difficult about making all these decisions is because we are a data-driven organization and people were using our service about a hundred days of the year to get dressed. Um, we started seeing that this was gonna massively disrupt our business in early March before many others in the industry and before many others across industries. 
So we made these decisions to cut expenses and cut OPEX and cut people before other companies were doing that. And you saw your friends and family members getting laid off, which made it even that more that much more emotionally difficult within the company. And as a leader, that was for sure the, the hardest thing that I've ever had to do, um, particularly in a business that you have been building together with thousands of people over time to create a new industry. The second, we then moved on to um, kind of after securing the financial sustainability of the of the business, we moved on to, okay, well, what is the world that we are going to be living in post COVID? And I asked myself a question that is really simple, but I'm sure that most CEOs have asked themselves, which is, will my business still be relevant after COVID? And as I thought about that, I thought that the answer was a resounding yes for a few different reasons. The first is I thought that COVID would propel a digital transformation in fashion, unlike the decades of movement online have already done. And we've seen that to, we've already seen that to be true where um, online penetration in fashion has basically doubled this year. It's done the work of the last 15 years. Um, we also saw this over this past, uh, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend in the United States that offline traffic was down 52%. So we thought, okay, well, we're a digital business. That's great. The second thing that we thought about was we're just going through this global pandemic. Everyone in the world is focused on the same thing at the same time for really the first time since World War II. And this is gonna change people's values in a big way. It's gonna change our values in terms of sustainability and health. And it's also gonna change our values in terms of how we spend our money. So typically people think about financial value in terms of, well, well, let me just slash prices. I don't think it's that. I think that it's about smarter, more sustainable forms of consumption. And we thought that that is exactly actually what we've been building over the past 10 years, which is a smarter and more sustainable way to discover fashion. So then the third question we asked was, okay, you know, are we gonna be more relevant or less relevant after COVID? And interestingly, it was our point of view that because of this shift towards a smarter and more sustainable way to consume in general, that Rent the Runway had a potential to be even more relevant post-COVID. So we decided to make a very bizarre decision, which was we decided to widen the value proposition of what we do at a time when most businesses were constricting their aperture. So we thought that we were uniquely positioned to own even more of the circular economy in a bigger way, especially because we have spent the last 10 years working hand in hand with brand partners of always um, only procuring inventory directly from brands. And we have played in two different lanes over the past 10 years in the rental space. And we've played in the subscription space. We're like, okay, well, let's actually be the pl only platform that offers all of our brands and our consumers a way to choose between renting, subscribing, or buying secondhand and having that all be in the same place. So we've gone from a period of cutting and focused on securing the financial future to thinking about how do we evolve the business model into a world that is going to be fundamentally different than the one we were just in. So the the resale bit, you and I have spoken before and you've you've referred to resale as long-term rental or what have you because it tends to be something that someone buys and then they might resell it again. Is this something you were thinking about that you would want to do down the line anyway and it just got pushed forward or was this not on your roadmap previous to COVID? The goal for us is really to build a living closet where the customer has infinite points of access and infinite points of flexibility. And the way that I've always thought about fashion is that 
traditionally we have been forced as consumers to make long-term investment decisions around every single article of clothing. Essentially everything that we wear, we had to own forever. And that is really only unique to uh, you know, the world of physical goods. In digital goods, we've had the opportunity to rent, to use for shorter periods of time, even in transportation over time. We've been able to choose, you know, like I don't have to use my, I don't have to buy a car for every single transportation event that I have. And so I've always thought about like, there are items that I might wanna use for a day, a week, a month, six months, a year. And we put these weird names on things. We call something a rental or we call something resale or a purchase. But what about actually giving the customer the ability to choose how long she actually needs to use something for and giving her a more sustainable way to think about rotating her closet? Because the old way, of rotating your closet was just buy a lot of things and throw 80% of them out. And we all know as, you know, the leaders in this industry that that is just not a sustainable way to think about um, moving forward. So yeah, I think that the basically, like if you want to own something forever, like I think that the blazer that I'm wearing is an item that has long-term use for me. I don't think it's going to go out of style. I think that it's classic and therefore like I might buy this new. If there is an item that I might want to use for a season or two, that might be something that I subscribe to. It might be something that I buy resale because it's at a lower price to buy it resale, but it's in like new condition because it's validated by a service like Rent the Runway. And then there are items that I might wanna use just on a temporary basis. I might wanna wear them once, twice for a week. And those things are on kind of quicker rotation via subscription or rental. Getting back a little deeper into this consumer psychology of it. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about buying more carefully, or, you know, a lot of people say buying fewer, buyer buying better. Your business is predicated on newness and that idea that the consumer wants that constant newness. Do you think after all of this that that's still going to be true? Do you think that, you know, after we've lived with our wardrobes for a year and some change and realized, oh, I actually don't need all of these things, that getting new things once a week or, you know, people I know we're, we're renting. I think you, you can wear workout clothes on rent the one, runway, right? Or leggings? No. You can. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So people I know were doing that. Now that you kind of live with your things and just realize I was listening to a podcast the other day where one of the the podcasters who's who's kind of an average or typical consumer was saying, I just realized I didn't need everything I had. Do you think going back, people are going to be as excited about the newness and the opportunity of the closet that Rent the Runway provides? Yeah. So I think like going up a level, like what is the beauty of the fashion industry? In my opinion, it is about giving people the ability to express themselves, number one, and even more giving people the ability to transform. Why do we buy, you know, dozens of items of clothing per year? It's not because we're all vain. It's because wearing something new to you gives you the opportunity to change your mood, to change elements of your life. That's how you present yourself to the world. I also don't think that Rent the Runway's value set is always about newness. It's about discovery. People come to Rent the Runway for the freedom to try a color, to wear a brand, to wear a trend that they actually would feel uncomfortable making a lifetime purchase decision around. And so I think that what Rent the Runway has so beautifully been able to do over the past 10 years is actually promote the most fashion, the most editorial pieces, because those are the exact pieces that you want to discover. It, it leads you to discover the brand, fall in love with it, and then you make your investment decisions in other kind of categories or, or styles for that brand. I don't think that discovery and fun in fashion is ever going to go away. I think that this is such an important part of self-expression. I also think 
probably the opposite of what you said, which is that when there is a vaccine, I think that we're going to be entering into almost like a hedonistic type situation where there's going to be worldwide euphoria. And I think fashion is going to be back in a big way. And what I mean by that is I think every article of clothing that we wear in the second half of 2021 is going to be something that we fundamentally would never have worn in 2020. I think it's going to be the return of like showing off color, getting out there, sexy, going out to a party, going on a vacation, like being spontaneous because we haven't been able to do that. And I think we've been robbed of something, you know, in this kind of lost year and fashion is going to be able to take us back. Um, so I'm not of the camp that believes that fashion is forever going to change. I think there are going to be some modifications, of course. I think that one of the things that fundamentally changes is how we shop. You know, we are going to shop primarily online. The biz your business has to be digital first and then use offline as kind of a ancillary business to help prop up your digital business. I think that we may not go into the office five days a week anymore. And that will fundamentally change, you know, our wardrobes a little bit, but we're going to go into the office sometimes. And I think we're going to prioritize a lot more of uh, work-life balance in our lives, which means we're going to go out more. We're going to go to more restaurants. We're going to take more trips. We're going to experience life more. And that's great for the fashion industry. So I'm very, very optimistic about the medium to long-term in the fashion industry. I'm very pessimistic about the next three months. The return of hedonism to fashion in the world. I can't wait to see it. Jen, I have a million more questions for you. We're gonna have to talk more soon. Um, but thank you so much for, for joining us. This was really illuminating and good luck in the next year. I know we'll all be watching. Thank you again. And Imran, back to you in London. <laughs>